regular meeting of the East Arm Township Board of Supervisors for May 24th, 2022. As we will stand, please, for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item, roll call. We'll start with Deputy uh, Chief. Deputy Chief Phil Pulaski, Mr. Father. Kelly Law, Township Engineer. James Sullivan, Director of Engineering Services. Dave Chris, Director of Finance. <laughs> Jeff Wood, <Wittemann, laughs> Assistant Manager. Bob Hart, Township Manager. Rebecca Geiser, the Solicitor's Office. <clears throat> Supervisor Dennis D. Santo. Supervisor Ashley DePiro. Supervisor Kevin McDevitt. Vice Chair Janelle Winder. Chairman Joe Gavans. All right, next item on the agenda. Uh, we're a little bit, uh, so we're pleased to have all our guests here tonight. I think they have a little special thing to do. It's the swearing in of our newest police officer, uh, Kimberly Jordan. And uh, we had Judge Alfarana here to do the honors. Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Pennsylvania Constitution. The Pennsylvania Constitution. The laws of Pennsylvania. The laws of Pennsylvania. And the laws and ordinances of East Arnhem Township. And the laws and ordinances of East Arnhem Township. And that I will faithfully carry out my duties. And that I will faithfully carry out my duties. Of patrol officer with fidelity. Of patrol officer with fidelity. Further. Further. I will uphold, obey, and enforce. Further, I will uphold, obey, and enforce the law without consideration. The law without consideration to a person's race. To a person's race. Color. Color. Sex. Sex. Religious creed. Religious creed. Sexual orientation. Sexual orientation. Age. Age. National origin. National origin. Ancestry. Ancestry. Handicap or disability. Handicap or disability. Congratulations. Thank you. 
focused on girls' youth sports in East Martin Township and the greater Norristown area. We are one of the only programs that specifically support girls' athletics in the Norristown area. We are one of the, I'm sorry, ENGAA softball program is the main financial driver of our organization and has had a home for many years at the fields behind Penn Christian Academy. Mm -hmm. We only recently were informed by PCA that the school is closing and their board is planning to sell the property, including the separate plot of land encompassing our fields. This is property that EMGAA has solely maintained for many years at a significant cost to keep our programs running and financially viable. This is also property that, to our understanding, was gifted to PCI by the township at the school's opening. The sale of this property would put an enormous burden on ENGAA to continue to operate a girls softball program and by extension would jeopardize our financial ability to continue in general. <coughs> As a township resident, the sale of this land that may also have been gifted to the school seems not in the best interest of the residents of East Norton Township and may certainly be the nail in the coffin for EMGIA. We are asking the board to consider any options available to ensure that this property can continue to serve the local youth of our township and remain athletic fields and green space. That's it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I will let Mr. Horn address that. Yes. Um, and thank you for bringing this uh, to us. And as you know, we're all well aware of a lot that's going on there. Um, I know there's a lot of misconceptions. And we had to do a lot of research because a lot of this happened years ago. Yeah. Um, first, um, the township didn't get to it. Apparently, the Narton School District, which some of you may remember, before yeah, the past, yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Um, sold it to the school for almost four hundred thousand dollars. So that, that that was one thing I found out. Not that it's a it's just interesting facts that we literally didn't know. Most most people here, um, we reached out to their attorneys. Um, they won't say for sure, but there's um, they said they have not even thought about entertaining uh, selling it, and that they may have another school coming. In. But they couldn't disclose anything more. There was some negotiations going on. Um, we were going to stay in touch with them for those reasons. And if you know, part of the part of the fields there, um, a strange um, angle, are actually owned by the fire company as well. Um, so it's if you know, um, like the, the snack stand and all that is all that's all on the fire company property too. So it's a it's a strange two parcel um, piece, um, but it really it really does um, provides for uh, a, a great option to um, an ENGAA. Um, that being said, we're going to monitor that very closely with them. That's why we reached out for that in particular, because we know you put a lot of time in there. Anytime you go over there, you see um, your parents and coaches over there working on the field, so everyone um, sees that. And I, I can assure you, because I, I know I can speak for the board in this, if there is a problem, if there is an issue with, with that at some point, um, even though their lawyers say no, um, we have options on this campus, and who knows what their options say, and it's something we take um, seriously, and we're already strategizing if need be. So we, I know the board wants you to continue to thrive as an organization, and you add so much to our township and our residents. It's something that we are well aware of, and we'd like to stay in touch with you as we move forward in this and see where this goes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for speaking out for the GAA. It's been a great asset to the community for years. Um, I was involved on the East Nine Rotary Board for a while, so we, we worked together. And uh, we certainly don't want to lose the grounds of the opportunity to, to have the, uh, the young ladies there but having the athletic activity. So, and, and as you can tell, we're, we're right on top of things. We're glad you brought it up. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Anybody online, Mr. Christ? No? Okay, we will move on to old business then. Um, Finalize the award for the 2022 ADA Curb Ramp Replacement Program. And I would like to call on our township engineer, Kelly Goff, to review this item. Can you guys pass the mic down, please? 
Thank you, Supervisor Gumeris. Um, under this business item, I recommend that the board award this contract to MJS Concrete. Um, under this project, which is entitled the 2022 ADA Ramp Program, several ADA ramps will be installed in the neighborhood near um, Heroes Park, as well as the middle school. Um, we have reviewed the bid for MJS Concrete and have determined that they are compliant with your responsible contractor ordinance. Um, so again, I recommend that you award it, and the total contract value will be in the amount of $346,520. And this project is being funded by a grant that you guys received. The grant is the DCD Multimodal Transportation Fund. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Yeah. Any questions from anyone on the board? Is this uh, grant money, is this uh, a match or is this total grant? Uh, this, the, the grant actually had a 0% match requirement. Okay. Um, so I'll have to, I'll have to be working with um, Mr. Chris to, to make sure all of the fees and the construction are under the under that, grant. Under that grant. So we won't call the council of anything and we get it approved. That's, that's great news. Okay, uh, having heard none of the questions, um, I'll make a motion to approve uh, or finalize the award for 2022 for the ADA curb ramp replacement program. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Second by Supervisor Piero. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, new business. Um, item A, resolution number 2859, reaffirming East Norton Township's emergency operations plan. I'd like to call on Deputy Chief Phil Pulaski to cover this item. So the emergency operations plan and the notification and resource manual, which is a component of it, are uh, elements of a major upgrade to the Township's emergency management program. And this upgrade is due to the efforts of the entire public safety team. So everybody thinks of fire, police, and ambulance, but uh, public works, engineering, code, and buildings have really contributed, put a tremendous amount of work into this. So it's a living document. Um, we're not going to wait a year to see if things change. We're going to stay on top of this. And uh, as I said, it's one component. So currently, in addition to keeping the emergency operations plan in norm, uh, up to date, we have a high rise building evacuation and emergency management plan meetings that are going on. Uh, we've met with the Cal Timberlake, we're due to meet with the Norton and East on Friday and Bentwood. Over time, plans get old and uh, contacts change, and we don't want to be making new friends and meeting new management people uh, at the scene of a catastrophe. So we're, we're, we're getting uh, out ahead of this. Um, Fire code, engineering, and building inspections have done a remarkable job in consolidating the business contact list. So I believe there were several different diverse uh, and possibly divergent uh, contact lists and they're all being uh, brought together into one, which is a, quite, quite an uh, effort. Um, we physically moved and uh, revamped the Township Emergency Operations Center. So we changed the location, we changed the organization. Uh, new IT systems, radio comms have changed, uh, situation awareness, which not only helps the first responders, but also keeps the elected officials in the loop, so you know what's going on in the township during a crisis, uh, and uh, the training. So we just sent six people to the county training for a software tool called Web EOC, which is absolutely essential. It's essential during an incident in terms of situational awareness, not just here in East Norton, but also in the surrounding townships and boroughs, so we know what's going on, because obviously in a catastrophe, uh, the, the lines that separate the townships are irrelevant. Uh, disasters don't know boundaries. They really don't care about them. So uh, this is gonna be a tremendous help, and uh, sending that many people who actually know what happened after the training. So when we came back, we, we went over it. It's a great tool. Uh, and the county's helped us out, they sent us a link, and they've just been working very well with us. And uh, more training coming, so we hope to get, uh, I would love to get a real simple drill and some simple training done before the storm season. So uh, things are really looking good on the emergency management front, but again, it's, it's the team. Everybody takes their daily assignment, they put it aside, and they work on this, which means the daily assignment doesn't go away, they just stay later to get that done. So uh, very, very proud to be part of the emergency management team here. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chief. Any comments from the board, questions? 
All right, before I put it up for a vote, I uh, just want to thank you for your efforts here to uh, improve the community, improve this uh, emergency operations plan. You put a lot of time and effort into it, and your years of experience are certainly helpful, and uh, we appreciate that. Thank you. And with that, I will make a motion to approve resolution number 2859 to reaffirm East Harvard Township's emergency, emergency operations plan. I'll second. Second by Supervisor DeSanto. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item B, escrow, item B, escrow release number one, uh, 3018 Whitehall Road. I'd like to call on Director of Engineering Services, James Sullivan, to review the items. Thank you very much, Supervisor DeSanto. I will talk loud since nobody wants a microphone near me. <laughs> this is escrow release number one, 43018 Whitehall Road. This uh, release is ready for the board's approval, and we therefore recommend they authorize escrow release number one for 3018 Whitehall Road in the amount of $23,390.00. Thank you. Okay, any questions or comments from the board on this one? No. Okay, here we go. I'll make a motion to approve the release of escrow number one for 3018 Whitehall Road in the amount of $23,390. I'll well, second that. Okay. Second by Supervisor McDevitt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, item number C, authorization to purchase four standard charging stations. I'd like to call on our finance director, Mr. Chris Chu, to review this item, please. Thank you, Supervisor Pero. Uh, as the board knows, uh, they've taken a stand over the last several years uh, supporting any number of different environmental sustainability and renewable energy programs that the township staff has put before us, before you. Uh, our LED street light replacement program, hybrid vehicles for different departments, including the police, codes, administration, um, and of course our electric vehicle charging stations out front in the parking lot here. Uh, the latest that we've got before you tonight are our stand-up charging stations, and a photo of which is over on the uh, display, hopefully you can see it there. Um, what we're requesting is the purchase of four solar charging stations for use in the township parks. Uh, as you know, we've spent a lot of money over the last few years upgrading any number of our different parks, which has increased the usage of those parks, and also increased uh, requests for services in those parks. And this is one of those where we're proposing to provide solar charging stations. We used to be able to charge phones, tablets, etc. We're implementing, we'd like to implement a four unit pilot program two units for Stanford Street Park, one for Heroes Park, and one for Old Arch Road. Um, and these would be available 24 7 in those parks for anybody using them. Uh, parents watching their kids being able to charge phones, tablets, do work, whatever the case might be. Uh, the total request is $11,840, uh, and uh, the units are actually manufactured by a Pennsylvania firm called Sunwolf out of uh, Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. Um, this, this is, um, we have grant monies for the parks that will pay for these, so um, it's just an added bonus and an added um, upgrade. So. Great. Any questions from the board? Okay, I will make a motion then to approve the purchase of these four stand-up charging stations for a total of eight eleven thousand eight hundred and forty dollars. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Supervisor Santa. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, resolution number twenty-eight sixty, establishing a uh, capital reserve fund. I'd like to call on our financial director, uh, Mr. Chris, to uh, review this. Thank you, Supervisor McDavid. Uh, as the board's aware, we do already have a capital reserve fund uh, that gets budgeted every year. Uh, that fund's sort of become an operating capital reserve fund. The departments are dependent upon it each year for budgeting um, really operating capital items. What we're proposing tonight is that the board establish a second capital reserve fund known as uh, the Township Investment Fund. And this fund would allow the township to plan for uh, longer term capital improvement expenditures. Uh, you may recall during the past budget season, we spent a lot of time on the, five, the township's five-year capital improvement plan. And what this investment fund would allow us to do is allow the board to set aside money each year to help finance some of those long-term capital improvement plans for the township, uh, hence its name, the investment fund. Uh, 
Uh, I'd be glad to answer. Uh, and we're required by uh, code to create this capital reserve fund by resolution, which is why we put that resolution number 2860 for your approval tonight. So I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? I have a question. Sure. Uh, so, just so I understand, and for those in the room, um, when we say like long term mm -hmm. capital, we all know what capital reserve fund does. But for long term, um, when we did feasibility studies for our facilities, and we know that I'm just saying, I'm kind of asking is this how it's going to work? We know that in 30 years we're going to need our roof on the building, or in 25 years we know that this this is going to have to be replaced. Like those long term things. Yeah. What, That's what, exactly what, right. Okay. Exactly right. Okay. Because I, I didn't know if it was common knowledge that we had feasibility studies done, um, but we got when we do feasibility studies, we get ages on everything that the township owns, and we know what their life expectancy is from a retaining wall to equipment on on the playground. So that's that's what we're talking about. Exactly right. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Is there further questions? That's true. Which I guess means I could have done a better job explaining. You did <laughs> great. You did amazing. Very <laughs> good. Okay, no other questions. I will uh, make a motion to approve resolution 2860, establishing a capital reserve fund. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Uh, seconded by Supervisor DeSanto. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, last item on the agenda here for uh, the new, new business, the monthly expenditures. Mr. Chris, do you want me to have you go through them, or we, I, I think you should uh, probably explain them as you usually do. I, I'd like to be able to go through them so I can see if I can do a better job. Than I did. <laughs> <laughs> so presented to the board tonight are the township expenditures for the month. Uh, more specifically, you may recall we do the expenditures from the day of the last meeting to the day before this board meeting. The total expenditures for that period of time are $945,962.76. It's broken down into two com uh, components. Our accounts payable expenditures, payments for utilities, supplies, services, total $393,304.17. And payroll expenditures, salaries, wages, payroll taxes, etc., for $552,658.59. Uh, township staff is, uh, staff is asking for the board's approval of these expenditures. Be glad to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? Okay. Are there any questions? Uh, I'm not going to read all the numbers again. I'll just make a motion to approve the monthly expenditures for a total of nine hundred forty-five thousand nine hundred sixty-two dollars and seventy-six cents. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second by Supervisor Wayne. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Other business. Anything else? Uh, board members want to bring up at this point? Okay. Matters update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a few things. Um, for those um, who are out there driving by Old Orange Road, um, that is our third, um, third is it? fourth park of um, renovated in the last two years. Um, it is very close to completion. Really, uh, it's, it's, it's a real upgrade uh, with, the, with the state of the art base. Um, it's safe. It's um, Everything, everything a kid could want and a family would want with young kids to be able to go over to the pocket part of the neighborhood um, and really enjoy it. So it's a, it's a great addition to that area of the township. Uh, everything's in. We just, our public work staff are taking care of restoring the ground to make it, you know, putting um, uh, the, the grass down and the grass seed and, and, and such. But it's, um, if you're out there, please go by. It's beautiful. And it's, uh, kids, are, kids are on it literally 10 minutes after they uh, put the poles in the ground. So it's, it's, um, I think it's going to be a big hit, and, and we look forward to a grand opening in the coming weeks. Um, if you're also driving around, our road program is active. Um, numerous roads have been done, uh, paved already. Um, we have a major one, uh, major road reconstruction at uh, Salt Mill Court. So there's a lot going on, and it's um, just evidence of our real commitment to um, improving our roads fundamentally. Um, like I always say, not like we did in the past with the Nova Chip, which was basically painting the streets. We do a full, um, a full reconstruction when need be, and a true paving. 
um, in today's these modern towns. So our roads, as they get better, they will stay better. Um, so we're really committed to that. So thank you for for uh, approving all that. Um, this Sunday, uh, the 29th, I think it's May 29th, um, at 1 p.m. there will be a wreath laying for, at uh, our our veterans memorial down um, at the end of Stanbridge. Um, our vets were working in coordination with our veterans groups. Um, we do it every year. It will be it's a it's a short ceremony, but it's it's important that we honor those who have. Um, really giving the ultimate sacrifice and really put them and their families um, lives on the line to, to protect this country. So um, please join us at 1 p.m. Uh, if you can at the uh, uh, Veterans Memorial. And last but not least, June 8th, um, it, it, many of the neighbors around the quarry uh, you know, have continuing questions about the quarry. We, we have a whole uh, group of email, an email chain that we keep people in uh, up-to-date on information as we receive it. Um, we are having a, uh, a smaller meeting out at the site on Schultz Road, right off of Pot Shop on June 8th at 6 o'clock, where we will be able to give some of the residents uh, the most up-to-date information from the Department of Environmental Protection, our legal department, um, everything that we've done and we've looked into around the issues that um, really uh, inhibit quality of life for some of the, some of the closest residents. So um, we continue to work on that. Um, but literally, at, at, we don't go more than two or three days without working on issues around that. So um, again, June 8th, 6 p.m., we'll be doing that meeting. Um, and we look forward to a uh, great spring, end of spring and summer. Our Parks and Rec Department is actively working. Uh, camp will be started. Um, everything, our concerts in the park, so we're going to be really moving forward and um, really have a good time this summer, and our residents um, will be quite surprised with a, with a few new additions, so thank you. All right, great news again. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Uh, any citizens to be heard? Thank you. Anderson, York, 3154, second more line. Regarding Ordinance 2180, establishing a capital reserve fund, I understand this was just passed tonight, and this would be an investment fund. Going forward with this, I would like to state, with the issues happening with the public school employee retirement system and that debacle that has cost taxpayers millions of dollars, what transparency is going to involve with this fund? Um, everything will be, everything will be, I, I just, um, are we talking about our pensions? I'm not quite sure. No, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about oversight right. of this fund, or, right. for instance, because the issue was with the employee's retirement system right. is there was an accounting error that ended up being about $25 million short that the state treasurer uncovered, right. and now new employees in that system have to make additional payments. Is there, what, what is going to happen to ensure that this does not happen to this fund? Well, I think, or, or, I'm, I'm not, I'm not at, and asking for an answer right now. What I'm asking I'm for, good. are there measures going to be put in place that ensures Nothing like that happens to this. They're, they're in place. We have, we have substantial internal controls of everything we do. Um, and we didn't have them, I'll say that, in the last six years. And I'll give much of the credit to um, our finance director, Dave Chris. Um, there was, up, up until seven years ago, you would, you would buy something, um, the township would buy something, and then get it approved. That's what we walked into seven years ago. Right. Now, we have several layers of approval before, before you buy anything. Um, uh, everything has to be signed off on numerous. It's not one person, uh, one authentication, so everything. We also have our audit every year. We have our audit. We have um, every internal control. If, if you ask some of our staff, they think they're not thrilled about these, one, uh, one after the other. Um, internal control because, you know, as you can imagine, it can get um, it can get problematic at times for someone who's in a hurry. But it's important for us 
that we do all that because our names are on it and we take that very seriously. So I, I fully understand where you're coming from, but every internal control is on. Not only that, everything's reported. So if you are financial, things at end of the year, our audit is um, available. You can request it here. All that stuff's available. So I, I encourage you. Um, when we present the audit here, get a copy. We'll give you a copy of it, and you can keep keep your. Um, as a resident, you you deserve that opportunity. So um, we are more than happy to provide you with that. All right. Answer any questions you have. Okay. Go ahead. So when we we call it we call it the investment fund because of its intent to be investing in the future of East Norton Township. Right. For the items that Supervisor DeSanto was describing. Uh, one of the things to bear in mind is. We don't, we don't have the same uh, investment options that somebody like those public school retirement funds are. We're restricted by state law to only be able to invest in, in uh, local, uh, to, to put our money in local banks where it's secure. We're in what's called a Pennsylvania Local Government Investment Fund, which is also a secure fund. So mm -hmm. we're extremely limited in, in what we're allowed to, where we're allowed to both invest those monies. But that's not what the fund is intended for. It's intended to set aside money to be able to quote invest in future projects in the township. Okay. But but we fully understand where you go. Yeah. We read the same articles you said. Yeah. yeah. So I, I fully understand the concern. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, sure. Thank you. And then you can press assured that the I'll speak for the members of the board here that we all are very concerned and, and very fiscally responsible, and uh, nothing will happen to those funds that shouldn't on our watch here. I can guarantee you that. And I'll, I'll throw a little thing if we were reviewing our pensions. Not that, not that that's a pension question, but Mr. York brought up pensions. Um, I, I haven't even brought this to you yet, but our pensions, um, the average in the state for municipalities is around 73%. And that, that's taking out Philadelphia, which is like 40 and, uh, you know, and we are at 91% funded. So we are, we are really strong funded um, pension plan. Not that Mr. York was talking about pensions, but you would spark that, that, that right. interest in it. Um, so I, that's something I'm going to report to you in an email, but I'll, I'll take the advantage of doing it. Yeah, so thank, thank, you, thank, thank you, Mr. York, for your comments. Uh, anyone else? Mr. First, anybody online? No. No? Okay. Well, then the next thing we have to do is just review some upcoming events here. And as Mr. Hart already said, already said the replaying ceremony is this coming Sunday at 1 p.m. Um, uh, it's, it should be short, but it's, it's also you know, a very important thing, yes. and, uh, and we want to you know, recognize all of the people who have sacrificed their lives and the benefit of our country. Um, there's a couple more uh, exciting things coming up. Friday, June 3rd, our first concert in the park. Our concerts in the park are great. We have a returning group here that, that seems to get record crowds, the Sensational Soul Cruisers. So that's Friday, June 3rd, 7 to 9.30, that will be at the lawn. Uh, on the 7th of June and Tuesday at the clubhouse, how to identify and avoid scams <laughs> at 10 a.m. So it's very important. So that's open to anyone who wants to attend that. Um, Saturday, June 25th, our second concert in the park is a group called Shot of Southern. From 7 to 9.30, that's a Saturday night, 7 to 9.30, uh, under the, uh, the stars, hopefully a good night. And um, we have a blood drive coming up on Monday, June 27th, uh, with our state representative, Matt Bradford, that's from 1 to 6 p.m. And then our next board of supervisor regular meeting is here on Tuesday, June 28th at 7 p.m. Okay, with that, um, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. Have a good Memorial Day weekend and meetings again.